<laughs> What's going on, everybody? This is SLTV here with Lucci and Kenny from Hit the Bid, and he seems like he's got a strange candle going on over there. What's up, kid? It's a seance, apparently. Yeah. What's up? What's up with the candle, bro? <laughs> What's up? Well, today's topic, it's, it's, it's something I wanted to talk about uh, a lot, what traders need to do to relieve their stress. My wife bought me candles. I say, honey, I, I love you and everything, but it's not going to cut it. So <laughs> I'm lighting it anyway. It makes me feel a little bit better. It does smell pretty good, but what's happening with you, my man? Nothing, bro. Nothing. It's a pretty dead day. Uh, I was hoping the Fed minutes would uh, would would give me some uh, you know some trading opportunities, but uh, pretty slim pickings here. Pretty slim pickings. It looks like small cap. Most of the juice went to small caps. Did you see that Arna today? Arna Pharmaceuticals. Did you see this thing? Yeah. Can I? You want? Okay. Let's talk about killing each other. Um, <laughs> I. It was one of the first trades guys in my room were talking about, and I was like, Hey, look, if they've got a new breakthrough drug. You know, people were saying if it if it doesn't hit 450, you might want to short it. I'm like, look, if there's nothing going on, this is the kind of stock that who knows what it could do. I don't care if it's up 20, 30 percent; it could be up 100 percent by the end of the day. And then I right. looked back, and it was at 550, and I forgot we were talking about it at 450. I'm like, what? So I missed <laughs> a huge move in that stock because we were in it from before. I, I wasn't in it. I'm not gonna bullshit you. You know, but yeah. we were talking about it. Guys in my room were were long it, um, but. Yeah, when, it, when there's nothing to do, that's the kind of stock that does what it does. Fantastic. God bless it, you know. And it has yep. weekly options. It used to be our favorite stock one uh, back in the day. I love that. This, this thing has weekly options? Yeah, yeah. Wow. that's. I wonder, what the, I wonder what the volume on that is. Let's see what the volume is. You know, another stock in my world that just does what it does is Chipotle, man. Look at Chipotle today, man. Chipotle up like 20, 30 points today. Yeah, is this an all-time high yet, or I, I stopped watching? This is watching. almost. This is like three dollars from all-time highs right here. Yeah, like you say, white people love them burritos, right? Dude, come on, man, come on. Like, what what type of cuisine that hasn't been packaged and sold and watered down by white people, bro? What right. what type of cuisine? It hasn't really happened yet with Indian. Okay, it hasn't happened yet, but they're gonna get to it. They're gonna get to it, man. I'm You'll get me you. out of that. I can't take the curry. Just the idea of curry starts making me sweat. But see, that's the point, right? That's the point. That's the point. White people will water it down and then offer you a nice, lovely ethnic cuisine for $6 on the go while you go to your shitty gym or whatever the hell it is. <laughs> hey, man, I, I got nothing negative to say about Chipotle. My kid loves it. My, my <laughs> wife is the only one that doesn't like it. I, I, I love myself. I haven't tried anything, I'll be honest. Other than the chicken burritos, but man, for nine bucks, I scoffed those bad boys down. Again, I have I fall into a little bit of a food coma when I'm done with it. But right. uh, you know, right? No doubt. So tell me, tell me. So seriously, how do you deal with you know? I, are you married? You got kids? What, what's, what's I got kids? I got kids. I I mean, I got kids. I mean, I have one kid. I have, I have right. one child. She's nine years old. Okay, I got two kids. You know, I stay home predominantly all the time. So you know. 2.30, one of them rolls in, 3.15, the other one rolls in, whether or not we got sporting activities. But what I want to talk to you is like, today was a very frustrating day for me. Obviously, we've all had frustrating days where you're just sitting around and nothing's working for you, and then, then it would have worked, and you would have and the could have. How do you shake it off? And I, I know you probably don't put on Taylor Swift and dance around your house, but how do you shake it off other than just, you know, because i got to go face my kids. i got to be put on a happy face, and I just want to fucking tear somebody's head off right now. i got to go study math. And cook shrimp scampi, and I'm ready yeah. just to light my house on fire. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll start with this. Like the last two years that I was in New York with the boys, right? Like we were all living together, and we all worked out of the same place. So one section of the loft was like was was packed with maybe like ten desks, and we had you know eight to twelve people there at any given time, and they'd be spread out across the loft too. So anytime I had a bad day. I would take it out on my intern, and then at that time it was at it was Greg Gamba. Uh, you know, I would take it out on him, and let me tell you something, man. Wow. I mean, I the the verbal abuse that this man had to take from me, man. Wow. Anybody anybody would gladly gladly get the fuck out or just 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 fire themselves or quit, man. I'm telling you. So I kicked the crap out of him, but I know what you're saying, man. It's tough to, you know, hold back in what you really want to say or it's like, yo, don't talk to me 
or yeah. this and that, but you know, it's like a struggle every single time. There's no one way to do it. Uh, the best way to just step away, but we can't step away because you're you're kind of like addicted to the action, and you want to be there for X, Y, and Z move, even when there's nothing there. Right. Uh, or maybe you have some losses to make back, and you know, it, it's just kind of like a, a, a shit show that, that that keeps going. What do you do, man? Besides lighting these candles and having fucking se- seances over there. Well, I, I try to remind myself that tomorrow's another day, but sometimes I'm like, oh, that's going to be more misery. Great. <laughs> I just want to be left alone. Uh, right. Well, you know what? When you just said, I don't ever, when I'm, when I'm having a down, if I'm having a down morning, I'm not like the Monday night gambler who's trying to make back the losses from Sunday. It usually okay. doesn't work out right. I'll just say, okay, if the morning wasn't good, I know I'm not an afternoon trader, so I'm really not going to trade. But what today was frustrating so much was that I had some decent trades in the morning, and then I sat in a trade, which is, you know, you know, we're instant gratification kind of traders. I know you hold a lot of positions and whatnot, but most of us, got, you know, most of the guys I trade, we, we want to be in and we want to be out. When so, when you're sitting with something for two hours, three hours, and then you finally, it finally stops out. You know, you take a small loss, and these are not large numbers, but then it finally makes the move with like eight minutes left in the day, and you're just like, oh, man, I just wasted two hours of my life and right. lost a couple of hundred bucks. It's hard. I mean, I, and that, especially if that's why trading in the afternoons, I never want to do it because if you end the day off on a sour note, then you got to stew about it all yep. night, and you're just waiting for the next day. But, you know, I just go down. I've been hitting the punching bag. You know, if you guys know me, I, I talk a lot about smoking weed and all, but... I'm kind of like, it's not cutting it for me. <laughs> if there was a drug where, if I had an right. amnesia drug where I could just, you know, take a pill and just forget about what happened, that would be awesome. But it doesn't really That would sense. be good. Yeah. Because that would, that would put you back on the even keel, right. you know? And, and, and then, you know, to the, to, the, to the Wall Street guys of the 90s, and even still to this day, you know, they take a lot of the, uh, what, are the what is it, the uppers. They take a lot of the, what is it, was it the Adderall? They take a lot of that shit. Right, right. That's what I wanted to talk to you about also. You know, I drink a lot of coffee, and I'm thinking maybe that's a detriment because it's making me a little bit more uppity, more anxious, and, you know, more looking for that instant gratification. I've never tried. Maybe you should just pop some lewds or, you know, take some downers or something. So I've never had I've never had a I've never had a lewd before. I can't even believe those guys were popping them like while they were working or whatever. I've never had that, yeah. so I don't even know what it feels like. Is it a downer or is it an upper? It's a big downer. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you no. Know it was. I mean, I've done them and I did the ones that they were talking about on Wolf of Wall Street. They 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 don't make them anymore. But it's kind of like you got to fight that feeling of just wanting to lay lay down and go to sleep. But if you get right. through that first stage of it. You're just kind of like, hey, man. Yeah. Right. It's like, you know, ever seen the ether, the ether yeah. scene in, uh, yes. what is it, Johnny Depp? Uh, Johnny Depp, yeah, 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 yeah. Las Vegas? Yeah, yes. man. Or when he takes, the, <laughs> he takes the shot in the neck in old school. You're yes. fucking crazy, man. Oh, the horse tranquilizer yeah. dart gun thing or whatever. Crazy, that is. man. You're crazy. <laughs> I love trading, bro. The bins are leaving, man. Whoa. That's crazy. So, I mean, it might be the way to go. I'm thinking. I don't know about the coffee, man. Kill the coffee. What do you do for breakfast, bro? I mean, you have like a big breakfast? No, nah, I'm a very light eater. I'm a trim 175 for a decade now. I don't, How tall are you? How tall are you? I'm 5'10, 175. And you 5'10, 175. That's good, man. That's good, What's man. Up? What's up? I have this pretty much the same breakfast. All the time. I eat oatmeal for breakfast. I have a cup of coffee, right. oatmeal, and then another cup of coffee. Yeah. You want to hear what I had for lunch today? I had a rice cake with two slices of low-fat turkey breast. Oh, see, man, you see, you passed it. Your doctor told you your life was in shambles unless you eat like this. So that's what happened to you. <laughs> I, I eat just to live. Uh, All right. You watch that show. Uh, what's that show? We're supposed to be talking about trading a little bit, right? There's a, that, mean, that, that show sure. Brooklyn Nine Nine, which is actually so much better than I ever thought it would be. No, I never seen that show. Great show! It's with Andy Samberg's new show, the cop show. But the the main guy, uh, the main the, the, the lieutenant, he right. said, if there was a brown mushy substance that I could just inhale to sustain right. my living, that's what I would eat every day. 
And that's me. I don't enjoy food. Some people love food. They love wine. I just eat food to live. So, right. you know, give me, give me, but every once in a while I'll throw a Chipotle, uh, you know, of course. in the mix. Of course, of course. So tell me else. So, so, so what are you thinking about this market right now? One day wonder? I don't feel confident about this, uh, this move up today. Uh, dude, I mean, 202 is where they needed to bring the spy back to. So, uh, you know, can they float us back up? My thing is there's no juice going back into the bank. So I don't know, man. This doesn't look like before where they just V-snapped the shit out of everything. And right. it was just, uh, you know, grab everything you can. But you know what? Things never happen the same way as they did before. So, you know, something, you know, there's something that we're not seeing here yet that's going to obviously be... Uh, completely obvious in hindsight after it does happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You but know? you know, we were talking about this the the other day. I had you know, I, I I get people come to my house and we do a little training. So she was asking me today why this and why that. I'm like, first rule, didn't I teach you this a month ago? Don't ask why. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares yeah. Why this is happening or what? So what do you think the FOMC is gonna ha was gonna have? I'm like, I I don't know what they're gonna say, nor do I care. I'm just gonna keep looking at the same things I keep looking at. And just trade it accordingly. You know, if there's is a reason why something's happening, it's it, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. You know, right. it's just you know I, I just looked at the VWAP and I traded the same stocks I traded yesterday today. I went right. back to that kite and it did the same move. So very peculiar. It actually broke another new high, but still failed to hold it. Rolled wow. over, went negative, broke the VWAP. It had a short on KITE. Wow, so far so good. It's a very nerve-wracking stock. They open. Is, the it, is it easy to get shares here, or is it tough to get shares? No, I've been getting shares pretty easy. I'm not, you know, get them. I've only done. I did 400 once, 600 the other time. I'm not trading yeah. size on it. They'll open yeah. that spread up to a dollar at times, which is kind of frightening. And really? uh, it's that yeah. illiquid, jeez. Yeah, yeah, and uh, especially at the beginning of the day. But yeah. you know, once it rolled over, you got, you know, got a buck fifty out of it. It was pretty nice. So you're looking for you're looking for a longer term short throw on this thing too, guys. Check out this K I T E, this pharma company. Uh, it's trading like 71, up from 25, like four or five months ago. Right. Are you looking for like a long term GoPro style shebang bang on this thing? The last two, this is the first two days. Uh, we've we've broken 52 week high yesterday, failed to right. hold it, rolled over, but rallied back to 71.35 yesterday. Today we broke right. another new high, yet. Close negative, so it's in that topping formation that I look for for okay. a, for a possible rollover. The right. thing with pharmaceuticals, again, if you're going to hold a short in a pharmaceutical, you're asking for trouble. One more breakthrough, and you know the stock's up a hundred dollars. Right, right. They often have, you know, when they're when they're crazy volatile like this, there's often repumping of already existing news, right? And then and then it yeah. just floats the thing around like crazy. I always hated that, man. That shit should be illegal too. The repumping of existing news that people already know about, or right. or, or or whatever. Like you remember when, like, uh, I forget who was being bought out. Maybe it was Akamai. I don't know if you ever watched that thing, but there was always rumors about potential buyouts in Akamai. Like every Every three weeks, and nothing would ever happen, but it would just shoot out there for randomly. Yeah. I always hated that. It's not a biotech stock, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. You know, and the other stock I went back to was Zillow today. It opened up down big again, and, uh, you know, around 90, what was it? 90, where is it? Uh, yeah, about 94.50 was breaking the VWAP, and then it was going green. Another nice trade. Yeah. And that's when I should have shut the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I had MU, uh, you know, I could, I almost got hurt on MU because I was long, it's, you know, because in this market it seems like any stock that gaps down on earnings, it, it gets a little, uh, if it doesn't crack down immediately, usually the buyers come in and they try to bring it positive. This one they brought it right to the break-even spot and then they dropped it on its head again. So. Yeah. Lucky I bailed out, but that was the one I was talking about. Later in the day, after it got smacked down to 32 and changed, I sat with that thing for like two hours for, for, for nothing. And then it just stopped me out, had a spike, and then just went flat for the day. Yeah. No doubt, man. Well, a couple other topics we had here. No, uh, What is it? Ego interfering with trades. You want to riff on that for a little bit? Yeah, that's what happened with me in U.S. Steel. I'm like, I'm a glutton for punishment. I don't want to give up on U.S. Steel. I understand the oil, the cheap oil. And here's a stock that I bought, 24.65. The stock was having a nice day this morning. 
I was all proud of myself for holding, finally held an overnight, and it was doing well. But then the charts tell me 25.09, you should get out. Right. And then right. 25, you should get out. But I'm like, fuck this shit, 24.65, I am I control this bitch. You know, I'm not selling this thing. And I'm like, you know, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to defend it. So I'm gonna, I love the defending the name. I'm defending yeah. the name, Kenny Glick. Yeah. I'm going to defend the name here at 25. I'm going to buy more, even though the source <laughs> telling me to get the hell out of the whole position. And the I just whole didn't want to hear it. Yep, the whole tape, price action, the whole nine. It's crazy how strong of an emotion, like, ego is. And by the way, like, 2014, what you just described, I mean, that was me. I mean, that was the reason why I just went into a tailspin. And it was like, but you know what? There's always, I feel like there's always an underlying reason for that ego to exist in the first place. Like, for example, for me, it was... The the you know making back uh, losses. It was making back losses. It was and then it was me tied to making a certain dollar amount for a particular trade or for the month or for the yeah. year or something like that. And when I'm when I'm like addicted to this number here, forget about the trade, forget about all that kind of stuff. It's like okay, what well, you know this is what needs to happen. So let's size in, let's size in, let's size in, let's size in. So I feel like there's always like an underlying root of where the ego manifests from. I don't know. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah, you you well the, the number thing that you're going to get you're going to get in trouble because if you're just looking at the, if you're just looking at your P&L and you're trading the P&L that that's a whole different psychosis. Of, of course. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean once you're once you're under that you're you're under a belief, you know, and we were talking about that also coming into the market thinking something's going to happen. You're not seeing the market clearly when you have that preconceived notion of what's going to go on. You know, but Right. Trading, trading dollar value. I mean, I, I've done that too. You're like, well, I lost 12 grand on the stock once before. I'm up 10 on it now. Let me try to get that last two grand. Right. And, yeah. And, yeah. Right. All those dumb like, little things. Oh, why did I get the hell out of this thing? What was <laughs> All it? right. So you got one here. Preconceived notions of market direction clouding your judgment, aka a bias here. And yeah. I did that this morning in Twitter uh, because of the explosive 7% move yesterday. I was like, okay. Uh, any dip here, I'm going to go ahead and buy. So she dipped like 50 cents off the open or whatever. I started chewing it up, uh, you know, looking for 40 bucks, and the tape was so disgusting all yeah. day. All day, and I looked at it, I'm like, dude, come on, what are you doing here? And I just sat there, and I fucking held the thing. Yeah, well, that's, that, that'll that get you in trouble, man. You just uh, you don't want to give up. It's a combination of all that stuff. You think you're right. You don't want to give up. That's why, you know, we should be more like the computers. That's what it really comes down to, you know. If yep. the computers are telling us one thing, just just hit the button because we got to take that extra step and hit the button. You know, I know you probably have auto traders and you have some stuff going on, you know, in, in the background. we got to be more like the computers and trade, you know, got to take it all out. No ego, no emotion, none of that stuff, you know. Right. And uh, Easier you know, said than done. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Especially when you, you know, if you're losing on, if you're losing on something, you know, it's so much easier to hold a losing position than a winning position. You know, some guy wanted to, he's like, how come I can hold something when it's down twenty percent, but when it's when it's up two percent, I'm 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 ready to, you know, hit the tr hit the hit the thing. He's hit like, the, I put on, yeah, hit the exit button. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He put on a hundred seventy-five thousand uh, dollar put uh, trade the other day, and uh, he's ready to milk this trade. He's he's feeling it. He's loving it. Five minutes, he's feeling, after five minutes, he was making so much money, he took it off the table, and he missed that monster sell-off. Right. We, we all do it. It's it's amazing. Right. He had this grand plan. He saw what he wanted to do. He put the plan in action, but as soon as he started making some money, he's like, oh, I'll take it all off. And that's <laughs> ego also. Yeah. Who are you to think that you're that smart to take the entire position off at one price? At that's one price. Ego. At one price, and that actually leads into the good uh, next topic here: when to take up size of trades. So, so when is it when is it good to size into trades? What do you got on that one? I got a lot to say about this one, but what do you got? Well, you know what? What I'm doing right now is, like I said, I'm, I've I've gone back to my old school style of trading, looking for the reversals and right, the, right, right, and the uh, so kind of like I'm in test mode right now. Okay, so it doesn't even have to, but even then, that strategy doesn't re even really have to do about sizing up. It's just about taking that size that you're comfortable with and going for those easy scalps or those easy confirmations, and that's it, you know, piling up those kind of gains. So so never really would you size up with that particular strategy unless, you know, something looks that good. Right. Well, that's the thing. I, I don't want it to be 
this one looks extra good because I want to treat every trade the same. So right. If you're going to size up, I think you should take this size up across the board. Right. You know, that's what I was saying to you. Like, like right now, I've been only trading a certain amount of shares per trade. You know, obviously, if it's a, you know, what was I trading, a, you know, BlackBerry or an ACHN, the size right. is going to be different than, than that kite stock. Right. But, you know, collectively taking all your trades up, I guess it, it's a comfort thing. Once right. you believe in your believe in what's working for you, then take it up. And the hard part about the sizing up is, the if you're watching the PL, it's going to start fluctuating a little bit more than you're used to. Exactly. So that's that's the stomach tolerance. It's like okay, I'm not usually used to taking ten thousand dollar winners and and losers. So therefore, I'm a little bit more on edge, right. and you're more likely to make some bad decisions because you're not used to that feeling. So it's kind of like a a, a slow. Uh, you know, a slow kind of getting used to that, you know, how much tolerance or how much pain you can take, right. um, you know, as you kind of increase in these levels. Me, bro, I don't even give a shit, man. Like, taking size to me, I don't care. Like, if I see something on the tape that I like and I know I'm going to get follow through from the index, I'm fucking buying as much as I can until I feel like I missed the move, I missed the entry. If I feel like I missed the move, right. I, won't even, I won't even mess with it. I wouldn't even mess with it, even though there's like many more entries on top of that. Like even this Twitter, like I was long from like 36 and a half, uh, and then she ripped at 39 yesterday. You know what I mean? I was out at like 37 and a half, right. and then all of a sudden market looks so weak. She popped like a point. I'm like, what is this? I just let it go. I just let it go, and she ran freaking three points. You know, into into the end of the day, but. You know, if I like something and I think I have a good entry and I know I'm going to get follow through on the index like my way, so if I'm long Apple, market's going up, and I and I have a good feeling that tomorrow market's going up or whatever, I'll take all the size in the world. I don't give a shit, dude. I don't give a shit. The problem with that now, though, bro, is yeah. that the market makers and the, the, the these algo guys, you know, they sniff you out right away. They sniff you out right away. So if you're sitting there taking size in an option, they know what you're doing, you know. They know you're crossing spreads. They know you're expecting here on on higher prices. They'll do everything in their power to either widen the spread so you can't get the size, or shake you the fuck out before that before that big move happens in the option. And I won't be a part of it because you know I got shaken out by let's say a, a random point drop out of the stock from from nowhere. You know what I mean? So I'll yeah. get gamed a lot. When I start taking that size now, much more so than you know four or five years ago, I'll say that definitely. So, do you do you trade the equity and the and the uh, option? Or you so I watch the equity and just trade the option. So I'm just okay. watching the equity, and then I'm also watching the tape of the option too. So I'm watching you know whoever's playing the option, and usually, bro, it's only me. <laughs> usually, <laughs> in in any especially if it's like Chipotle or Priceline, oh, I'm yeah. the only one fucking around in these options. The only one messing around in these. Right. Things. So it's so easy for the market maker to be like, look at this motherfucker. <laughs> what can I do to this asshole right here, you know? Right. So, so it's a, it's always me against these guys, and these guys. Let's face it; they have they have more capital and more time on their hands to burn me out the trade before that option goes to the moon. I've always been curious about size on options. You know how you know there's guys that swear they just look for the unusual options activity, and they assume right. that is a a buyer or an a indicator, right? An indicator of where that stock is going if it's going to go to that strike price. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, and you got to understand, you know, like whatever X Y Z. We'll just use the uh, Series Seven terminology. X Y Z. You see somebody is a five thousand contract, uh, assuming it's a buy. Right. Okay, that's an out of the money call. Um, everyone's like, oh shit, someone's betting the stock's going to twenty two fifty by May. I better buy it here. Who knows what that guy's doing? Maybe he's got 500,000 shares in a hedge fund right now, and he just decided to just hedge right. the whole thing, and it's just a covered call being being written. That's what I've always wanted to know. Is there you know, a way to tell what the underlying real significance of that position is? And then also on top of that, when you see these large trades going off on the, on the option contract, do you right. think it can influence what the stock does, or is absolutely, it still, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. But the problem is, is that is that it's it's a cascade effect, right? Like, let's say somebody affects a large, 
uh, you know, buy or sell in a, in an option. So let's say you know somebody buys ten thousand contracts with Twitter or something. Way uh, you know three months out and way out of the fucking money. You know, right. you'll see all that. You'll see that all the time on the spy. And then what happens is when that order takes place, you get all the retail dumb fucks that are bidding the bidding for the option too. And subsequently, let's say if it's on the call side, the market makers have to come in and hedge by buying stock as well. They like right. they gotta sit there and buy stock too. So right. they'll they'll float that price up, and then all of a sudden you'll get that monster washout because remember, like the market makers are the ones selling all those calls at those high prints, and they're also hedging with the stock. And then all of a sudden they'll wash out that stock. Everybody who's long those calls now is going to sell it back to the market maker for fifty percent off, for seventy five percent off, and then you'll get and then you'll see that move, you know? Yeah. So you know, those are the things that, that, that happen. So you'll see a lot of the manipulation off the backs of uh, you know, a large options trade that goes off. So, you know, but just because somebody puts out you know, a 10,000 contract order here or there, it doesn't mean shit in, in reality. It doesn't mean shit. Somebody took the other side of that trade. It's a bet. It's a bet, and that's, and that, and that's all it is. And it's a bet that just needs to be hedged. And then when, it, when, when, when that game starts, that's when all the manipulation happens. Right, right. What about something like, here? Yeah, take a look at this one. I, I, I trade the stock uh, CLDX, one of my favorite biotechs right now. I like the action, and it's been, you know, back in the film. It's pretty volatile between 16 and 20. Yesterday, somebody bought... January 2016's okay. $20 calls for five bucks, you know, a pretty big, you know, I think it was uh, 1,500 contracts. You know, how do you interpret that? That's this guy, either this guy, to me, if I own the stock and I believe in the stock, right. and let's say he thinks it's going to $25 and he, a year from now, right. and he sold those 1,500, you know, he, he's happy taking in, you know, five bucks. That's a seven point premium from here. Right, but immediately everybody thinks, "Oh shit! Somebody just bought fifteen hundred twenty dollar calls for five dollars. This fucker's going to thirty minimum." Exactly, 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 and that's where you get the retail humps that are going to pay up in front of that guy, in front of wherever that price went off, right. and that's where the gaming aspect just starts, and that's where it just opens up the door to all of that. So oftentimes, those big orders. Are more of a uh, an indicator for uh, definitely increased volatility in that stock. I would say. Right. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think it was a couple of months ago. Somebody was the. It was one of the largest orders on the VIX, the VXX on the. Yeah, ball. I think I saw that. I think I saw that. What was it? The VXX. It was the ETF. It was the. Yeah, it was the ETF, and it was yes. for thirty, right, or for, or something. Somebody went completely ballistic. It was like the biggest. I mean, everybody was talking about it. Somebody went, you, and that somebody was right. So I yeah, mean, so it it it, it does yeah. it does work out from time to time. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But when you uh, say, yeah, good. And then and then you got the next one here. Best time of day for trades and uh, when your strategy worked best. I mean, I think we can all say that mornings here are the best times to day trade. Uh, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to grab some quick volatility, but um, I don't know. What do you think about that? You don't really, you don't like trading in the afternoon, do you? No, my 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 wheelhouse is usually nine forty five to about eleven o'clock. To eleven o'clock. Yeah. Thirty. It yep. seems like you know if you're if you're um, Getting into the entries, like let's let's take for instance Zillow today. Okay. I mean Zillow is hard because it did have uh, it did have a pretty decent pullback. Oh but. wow! I didn't realize she came off that much from her highs, man. A hundred bucks. Yo, this thing is crazy, man. This thing puts in some monster moves every day. The ranges are pretty wild, man. Yeah, this was gapping down like there was something out there that somebody you know I don't know looked pretty awful at the open, but yeah. then. It, Immediately started ripping. You know, I was in like ninety four fifty, and I was, you know, I got out ninety six fifty, about no, well ninety six fifty, okay. really, not a bad trade. And then it spiked, you know, a couple more points as always. Right. And then it pulled back to the one minute VWAP, and it was basically hovering around ninety six ninety two. What I, what I was alluding to is sometimes a, a morning trade could still be in play in the afternoon. That's a, absolutely. Trading, you know, the afternoon. 
I don't want to, you know, this one, it pretty much stayed in an uptrend for the rest of the day after right. 11. The problem, the problem with this is that, you know, yes, sometimes the morning trade is, is great, but you've got to be in the right name that still floats, you know, towards the end of the day. Plus, you also have to have to realize the market has to has to act a certain way in order to allow these things to just keep floating. So, for example, like, dude, look at Baidu. Look at Baidu this morning. Right, so this would be an example of the converse. It's like a great morning move. And then, uh, you know, everybody's hopping in this, and then it's garbage for you know, this is just absolute garbage for the rest of the day. Um, you know, whereas it, let's say you look at CF, which is a fertilizer name. That's one. That's something that's similar to to, to Zillow. So that's something you can go along and kind of stick in uh, for the rest of the day. So you know, it has to be the right name too, and then oftentimes it's tough to it's tough to pigeonhole the right ones, especially if you're day trading uh, and trying to find that one. You know, so and and then other other too is that the volatility comes out after a certain period. So especially if you're in the options. So now for any of the options traders out there, even if you do get a float higher and maybe a point or whatever, you're not going to make that much more premium on it. You're not going to see that much more premium on your option. Right, so right. Another thing that for options traders, they can't really stick it out because, dude, the, 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 the spreads widen. There's no liquidity out there. Uh, you know, it's, it's nasty. It's nasty when there's no uh, action in that stock. Right, yeah. Like uh, HLF was a decent trade. I caught it twice. And, uh, you know, again, I love the one minute VWAP before. You know, the first trade in HLF to me for, for today was at 10.20 when it was around 28.50. Love when a one-minute VWAP's also colliding with a half number or a whole number. I still – that's old school. I don't know if you remember that. Right. This seems like half number, whole numbers. Yep, yep. Triggered there. That's – because when yep. you're – you know, when you're just a Joe and mom and pop, you don't call, yeah, I need to buy the stock at 24.35. You call it, <laughs> buy it at 24.50, buy it at 25. Half number, whole numbers. So when they right. got a one-minute VWAP – also, right. the stock it also kind of bottomed out to that twenty seven sixty area, so yeah. it broke that twenty eight fifty, and went right to like thirty. You know, beautiful trade, and then it just you know looked like it was gonna roll over again. What do you think about HLF? I, I forgot about this stock. Fucking, I did too, man. I did too when it was back up at ninety. I know it's starting to come back down. Oh wow, she hit thirty. Oh, she hit twenty eight. Yeah. Shit. I, I, last I checked the stock, I haven't watched this thing. I remember it was in the 50s. I know the Ackman and yeah, know, yeah, I can, dialing yeah. it out and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And, man, I guess the shorter got it right. He's probably not short anymore, just like a bad like – Yeah, bad. he probably isn't. They said they had some statement out from him saying he took a loss or something like that out on right. it. Look at how crazy the rallies are, though, off, off the earnings, right? So every earnings call, they rally right into it, and then off the earnings itself, they just <laughs> drop it all back. That's disgusting, man. That is disgusting. That's a tough. It's a tough name to trade, man. Yeah, it actually hit a 52-week low today. I look, as, uh, now, so now I'm seeing it. Oh wow! It That's came great. off the 52-week low, broke the one-minute VWAP. I that is great. Shot and was a nice, nice trade, but. That is great. So, dude, let's end it with this, man. Do you think uh, we 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 trend back to those uh, to those all-time highs right now? I mean, with the with the market the way that it is, or do you think we uh, we start correcting? I'll tell you, we got over the cup. We got over the few prices on the Q. Again, I'm not an S&P guy or a Dow Jones guy. Yeah, so yeah, I, you're a Q's guy. You're a Q guy. Most of the NQ and the QQQ, which is I'm a tech guy and I'm a big fan of that. It got past all the prices I needed to get past. It held, more importantly, at uh, about 11:30 today. It almost broke back down. Yeah. I'm like, oh wow, this is the moment of truth. If we break down here, this this rally is gonna fail, and we're rolling right. over big. Not only right. did we hold that one hundred dollars sixty cent area, but we spiked off it. Boom. Yeah. And then we went to the highs of the day, and then we did nothing all the rest of the day. <laughs> but right, that's right, important. Right. So once again, I, I don't know if this rally is going to hold. Something about it, I'm not trusting this market right now. But we're yeah. coming into earnings season. It's going to be every man for himself. Yeah, but when does it start? When does that start, by the way? Is that Feb? Alcoa is next week, so we're ready. We're ready to rock. Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. All yeah. right. So I'll, I'll be watching Alcoa. It's my favorite stock still. I still think the stock's going to you know, be up 100% in the next two, three years. That's right. 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 30, now, let's say 50%. We'll, we'll 
scale it down. Twenty four dollars. <laughs> oh, so you you don't want to be one of those no consequences for bad analysts, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the risk reward is still in our favor. I mean, if it breaks thirteen eighty five, this thing's going back to twelve fifty, maybe. Right. So, you know, but I think you got you know eight nine points upside from here in the next uh, let's say a year year and a half. Other than when they give price predictions on stocks, the analysts. Sometime in the future, this might go to twenty-four dollars. It could be <laughs> three weeks, a year, ten years. Who knows? I'll if it goes there, I'll be back on CNBC saying, "Told you." Exactly. But if it doesn't, exactly. you'll never hear from me again. <laughs> All right, man. Well, dude, we uh, we kind of went over here as far as time, man. So let's kill it, man. Any uh, any parting words, guys? Friday, uh, Kenny and I will be back on, and Friday's show is a much more lax show. We're gonna just really. Uh, talk about things kind of relating to traders, but not really. We're just going to shoot the shit about whatever whatever it is and just rant about nonsense, things that are important to us that we feel that are important to you too. Uh, any parting words here, Kenny, before we uh, we close up, man? Uh, parting words, I'm going to ask everybody to do me a favor. Give me some highly leveraged oil ETFs. So oh, just, shit. Just, you know, now if, if it's going to bounce, we're probably going to get a decent bounce. I don't yeah. know. I'm not saying I know the oil is going to bounce. I've never even looked at oil. Yeah. Not be in 15 years. You yeah, me, me neither. Oil, me neither. The last time I looked at oil was when Goldman Sachs put that crazy price target on it before the tank to like $30 a barrel. You know, right. they put that $200 a barrel target on it. I and then it crashed to like $30, $40 a barrel, which was so crazy. Right. One day up does not make any significance to me, you know. But yeah. I'm look. I've been looking at some of these ETFs. Uh, what did I find today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah what are they? What are they? U W T I. U W T I. This is something that you could probably. Yeah, you'll just your average trade. You might buy what fifty thousand shares, hundred thousand of this. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a three-dollar one. I mean, <laughs> if I'm going to trade any of these, this is the one. <laughs> I, I want the one with the most. I want the most dangerous one right now. And I, <laughs> and you know what? This is three dollars. So it, essentially, here I'm, I'm sure spreads are pretty thick. Like actually, this thing only trades. This thing doesn't even trade a million shares a day, bro. No, I trade eleven million today. It traded eleven million. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. So so there's some decent volume then. Right. Because the the inverse one, I forgot the symbol, just went from thirty bucks in September, it hit one hundred and sixty five today. Oh man, that was like the skiff when that came when that came out. You remember those reverse financials? Oh, and they God. just came out before the crash happened. Yeah, Yo, yeah. the skiffy the skiffy would go from like four hundred to a yeah. thousand in one day, man. Yo, this shit was crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. I my just, prop for my prop for my head trader would would literally yell at me every time I got in. He'd be like, "No, don't do it, don't do it." He would literally try to block me from trading it yeah. just so that I wouldn't take the risk on it. These were the great days in the prop world when nobody gave a shit and there was no like risk controls or anything. You do whatever the fuck you want to do. Right. <laughs> but that's what I'm looking for now. You know, I don't know if it's oh. gonna bounce, but I've never traded oil in my life. No so doubt. now I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna explore the possibilities. So I'm looking for the most highly dangerous leveraged long one right, right. now. I got uh, UCO and UWI. Yeah, UCO. That was the one I used to trade. Oh wow, yeah. So they all look pretty much the same here. Yeah, they all look pretty much the same. All right, any of you guys who have uh, reverse ETFs or leverage ETFs, hit up at the, hit the bid radio and yeah. let uh, your boy Kenny know. How to lose his motherfucking money? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But where? And again, I don't even know where the price of oil is. Where? Yeah, because no, because who cares, dude? You remember in the days where you'd have to take a delivery of a barrel of fucking oil when you traded yeah. these ETFs, man? Right, right, right. <laughs> Now it's who cares? Who cares? Give me a give me a reverse leverage from pro shares, and that'll be great. That'll be great. Let's do it. And also, I don't know the difference between light, sweet, crude, or the or, the, or the, is it the black oil? Is this the brown oil? Or is it the light sweet? Is this, oh, man. I don't know which is which. Just so somebody educate me, because I feel like gambling on something. Ah, I'm tired of betting against the Knicks every night. That was, that, was, yeah. that was always a joke too when I came into the prop firm. Like, you know, my boys would be like, "Yo, so how was that light and sweet last night?" <laughs> I would sit there and trade USO light and sweet crude oil. 
Yeah, I have no clue about any of it, but I, 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 I I'm know. feeling like I don't know. I don't what's I don't know what, but we'll talk about it at a later day. I'm gonna no I'm gonna start educating myself, but no uh, doubt. Well, dude, post it, post the entries, man. Post the entries. Let us know when you get in. All right, man. All right, bro. We'll see you on Friday, man. Let's talk some shit on Friday. All right, man. Be good. Be safe, everybody. And uh, I don't trust the market right now, long or short. So I've you'll, got no you'll comments. Stay warm too, man. Get one of Kenny's hats, man. Kenny, show, show him the hat, man. So, you know, yeah, you got to get one of those. Northeast is cold, man. I ain't going out for like another four days. This hat was like two hundred dollars too. <laughs> it's no joke. <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good evening. We'll catch y'all on Friday. SLTV. You know where to find us. All right, boys. See ya.